There is over 100 knives in Valorant. Actually, there's 106 different skins. So I compiled it all, threw it at my Discord with around 75,000 members and let them all vote for their favorite knives. Now, the results are kind of shocking because there's a couple knives that stay true to the top and just simply can't be dethroned, even with tons of new skins being added to the game. So let's get through it. 106 knives is a ton. Starting with Trash Tier, a tier below F tier, just because they got one or or two votes. That is all of the love that these knives got. So let's start it up with the Venturi knife. Not the worst, but obviously I understand. Then the transition knife, also a disappointment. Then the Tildy knife, also a disappointment. Then the striker knife. Again, we're seeing a trend here. Following that, the outpost melee comes through with uh, just not cooking. I hated this melee when it first came out and it aged like milk. It was already sour milk, but then now it's just rotten milk. After that, there's the No Limits Bat. This one always makes me chuckle because some of these skins, right, literally put them in the store thinking we would buy them outside the battle pass. And as you can tell, reception for them is never very good. After that, we got the Hive Mind Sword. Always thought this was ugly. We got the Genesis Arc. Same goes for this one. Just a bunch of ugly ducklings down here. Then we have the Karyalis. Karyalis, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Let's move on. That's, that's all the attention this skin deserves. Then we have Bound. Same idea, not cooking very hard here. Then we have the composite knife. I've made this joke a million times. Throw it in the compost. It's just, it's, a, it's terrible dad joke. It's just bad. It's just trash. That's why it's down here. Then we have the ember clad hammer. It's just crazy. Who's buying this? Who is buying this? Then we have the obsidiana. Followed that the nebula knife, which I almost bought. I'm ashamed. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. Okay. I almost bought the nebula knife, but I, I didn't buy it. Then we have the Lux knife. Originally, clean, not so clean, didn't age very well. A clean skins overall didn't age that well if they don't have animations. That's just something to keep in mind. Then we have the Iridian Thorn Blade. Again, a lot of these are just unmemorable. Even if I look at the Iridian Thorn, it's not terrible for a Battle Pass skin as is. It's just unmemorable. That's the problem. Then we have the Intergrade Blade. Same idea, not very memorable. Then we have Hack. The fact that this was a skin on sale, I could go off. The fact this thing exists is crazy. But anyways, hack is down here where it belongs. Then we have the Ego Knife, same idea. By like selling Battle Pass skins in the shop is just, it ain't it, it ain't it. And I'm glad to see that they fall all the way down alongside the Battle Pass skins where they deserve to be. Then we have the Daydreams Crowbar. This one's pretty freaking bad, I'm not gonna lie. Then we have the Chromo, Chrome Deck Gauntlet. See this one, see the Chrome Deck Gauntlet? This is not too shabby in terms of being clean. If this was a Battle Pass knife, I think people would actually like it, but this was a skin in the shop, so no one really cared. Then we have the Blade of Circuit. Uh, sur circuit, Circuit, I don't know how to say it. It's uh, it's very forgotten. It's, it's not, not good, not good at all. Then we have the Kingdom Knife, Loki. This is an OG knife. This was the very first battle pass. So to me, I like owning it, but at the same time, clearly it, it actually fell. It used to be higher and over time it's fallen. And it just goes to show that people don't really carry sentimental value on skins even classics, which is pretty interesting. That's actually something Valorant is missing, a, a lack of classic or rare cosmetics that people really care about. As we can see here from the very first ever Battle Pass knife, people just don't like it. People don't like it that much. From there, we go on to F tier, so still completely terrible, but just a little, It's they're just as bad, to be honest. You guys just gave them a little more votes, but they're still bad. The first one in F tier is Titan Male Mage. So again, kind of same idea. Then we have the Sand Swept Dagger, all these just sort of blend in together. Then there's the prism knife, which I would put in trash tier, but okay, I guess just based off voting to F. There's the Huelis knife. This literally had a trailer, by the way, by the way, Riot made a trailer for this, <laughs> for the sword, but okay, um, not worth it. Then we have the Crimson Beast hammer. Um, I haven't really seen any hammer get a lot of good reception, even though I think theoretically it's pretty good. Oh, actually no, Cryostatus hammer. I wonder where that is, but Cryostatus hammer has some pretty good reception. They need more good hammers, let's be honest. Song Steel. I think this was actually a good battle pass skin, but nonetheless, a battle pass skin. Then we have the k Tac Blade. Same idea. Good for a battle pass, but still a battle pass skin. Then there's Fortune Spectre. The <laughs> That's the latest knife, by the way. It's not even out yet. Like, it's going to be in our shops next week, and people are already like, keep that down there. Why is that here? Keep that all the way down there. <laughs> then we have the Task Force 809 knife. Very, very, very forgettable in my opinion. Snowfall Wand. I think holiday themed stuff would be beautiful. That's the thing. I actually think it'd be so interesting, but they're not making them interesting, and you can see that's where it ends up. Altitude Knuckle Knife. 
Great idea. Great idea to give like a knuckle based weapon, but you need to add more spice to its life in order for it to be memorable. People, I forgot that we had a knuckle knife in Valorant. I forgot. That's bad. Shell Spire's sword, the latest battle pass, just down here with all the other battle passes. Actually, it's underneath the Winter Wonderland candy cane. Now, I'm going to admit, I don't really like the candy cane, but at least they kind of did something unique for that winter. But like, right, it fell off a cliff when it comes to matching and holiday seasoning stuff. They literally just nothing. After that, we got the spline dagger. Same idea, just, I, I mean, this one was like kind of OG, but it's just, just a, it's just a weird skin to be honest. Then we have the rivery sword, which is like the glass sword. Again, just a copy paste of a model that already existed in the game. So of course it's not really gonna cook, doesn't even have effects. We have the dot sys melee, not bad for a battle pass. We have the prism three axe, also not bad for a battle pass. It was something they tried to sell on its own with the prism knife. Glad that it made its way to the battle pass where it belongs with variations. So not terrible. Next, we have the Liberty Combat Knife. Same idea. It's in our games, but it hasn't hit the shop yet. And people just don't care about it. It doesn't have effects. Next, we have the Soul Strife Scythe. Again, dropping the ball here. Riot tends to have good ideas. Like a scythe is a good idea, but it is executed very, very poorly. Now we're going to go from F tier up to the gracious D tier. Wow. <laughs> still, still not that great, but okay. The first one in the D tier would be the Mage Punk Shock Gauntlet. I think this had a lot of potential, but it just missed the mark overall. Then down here is also the Ion Energy Sword. I know some people really, really like this, but it's just been forgotten. It's an OG skin that just didn't have enough flair to hold its own. Then there's the Katarina Knife, which, you know, thanks to its uh, moveset and animations, holds quite strong. It is a clean knife. This is how you do a clean knife. It's a little pricey for what it is in the shop, but it's still a good knife. Then there's the Singularity Knife, which I would agree it is D tier. Same idea, a lot of a lot of potential, but they just didn't make it happen. Then there's the Relic of the Sentinel. I think it's funny because this one is the exact opposite, right? You know how there isn't a lot of effects on Singularity and stuff? Relic of the Sentinel has a lot going on, but it's almost too in your face. They overstepped its boundary and brings it all the way down here. After that, there's the Prosperity. I think this one belongs in the trash tier, but it is what it is. You guys are the ones voting, <laughs> not me, not even close. Then there's the Orion Sword. I actually think this one, it, a lot of people actually kind of like this one. It's a very unique style. I actually believe this would have made such a memorable, beautiful battle pass. Maybe I'm asking for too much, but I think so. Then we have the Gravitational Uranium Neuroblaster Baton. Believe it or not, I don't hate this one in the sense of I don't like it and I haven't seen it equipped in forever. But I'm surprised I don't see it a little bit more because my prediction feels like it would gravitate, no pun intended, towards people with this niche who likes this kind of like sci-fi space niche. But I don't know, it didn't, it's clearly not hitting very well. After that, we have the Blast X Polymer Knife Tech Coated Knife. Oops, Knife Tech Coated Knife. I didn't even know it was called that. But anyway, same idea. I thought it would hold its own little niche, but I haven't seen it in literally forever. And now it's fallen off. Actually, it got beaten by the guardrail hammer. The latest freaking, the second latest, sorry, not the latest battle pass, second latest battle pass before this one that doesn't even have proper animations. How did that one beat it? Even the Neptune anchor made it through here. What? The Neptune anchor. Okay, well, it, they're both pretty bad knives, but that concludes the D tier. Now we get to move our way up to the C tier. Finally, these are like knives. <laughs> <laughs> They're equipable knives now. <laughs> so starting with the C tier, we have the personal administrative melee unit. I never really liked this one. I know certain people do like it. Somewhat kind of clean, simple animations, but then a lot of animations, if that makes sense. But overall, I don't really like it. Then there's the Origin Crescent Blade. On the flip side, I actually enjoy the Origin Crescent Blade, but you guys haven't voted for it very heavily, so it doesn't make its way past C tier. I think it's still pretty good. But again, this is more like they're equipable, but nothing very special. C tier is just like decent, but not special. After that, there's the waveform, which I know is kind of crazy. The whole Zed collab, it's like the last collab, by the way, they just never did it again. And you know, it's fallen from grace. People really liked it, but it was not worth the price, not even close. Then there's the Terminus A Quo. Loki, Loki, this one's kind of cool. I didn't buy it, so I can't put my, my money where my mouth is, but I think this one's actually really cool. I would put a B tier, but that's just my opinion. You guys voted. It is now in C tier. Then we have the Mage Punk Electro Blade. I think this is good in C tier. This one, I agree this one. You guys cooked. Then there's the Cryostatus Impact Drill. Same idea. It fits a certain niche, but it's healthy in C tier, so I like it. Then there's the Broken Blade of the Ruined King. 
perfect. You guys are cooking. C tier is perfect. It's like, these are good. They're equipable, but they're only very for a small audience. So good job. Primax, same idea. Actually, Primax is good that it's even holding its own here because it's literally just a gold axe. It's like prism with a little bit more texture, but it's so OG that people have some sentimental value on it. I do. So good job. Artisan foil. Um, yeah, I mean, considering how the battle passes have been recently, this would be uh, considered pretty good overall in perspective of the game. So not bad. Then we have the Valorant Go Volume 1 knife. I don't think this one's that great, especially now that we have another jet jet like animation knife. So not my favorite, but it's fine. Luna's Descent. Okay. Also not too bad. Not too bad. I'm okay with this one as well. Not too bad. Glitch Pop Axe. Actually surprised. Um, I, I think I thought it would be a little higher because people just really like whoever likes the glitch pop like really likes the glitch pop But overall same idea. Not bad. You guys are cooking forsaken ritual blade. This one's pretty good Maybe could have snuck into the B tier, but it's like at the it's like a C plus because it's just at the cutoff There's even only one more above it, which is the blade of chaos. It's just too chonky too big It makes the mark for the last C tier knife. The other knives barely make the cutoff though We're gonna enter basically B minus now but as we enter b we go to the velocity karambe i think this is fair i think it's actually very fair probably the best or second best battle pass knife and i remember i complained about this battle pass knife which breaks my heart when i look back because now i just hope riot ever makes it to some sort of quality similar to this thing it's crazy how far down we've degraded in battle pass quality because i thought this could have been better but clearly i didn't know how bad it could get because this this makes sense this is definitely b tier then we have the blades of Imperium. The same idea. I think this is decent. It, it, I don't know if I like it too much, but it's not bad. Then there's the Elder Flame Dagger. I would say this could be C tier, but you guys voted B tier. I think it's just too expensive for what it is. When it first came out, it made sense, but like Riot can do so much more crazy effects now, so I would have expected more. Then we have Gaia's Wrath perfect in B tier. You just want a clean axe animation. This is one of the best axe animations because it's the normal one, but it just makes sense for it with the trailing effect and stuff. So fantastic. There's the equilibrium. I don't know if I really like this one, but that's fine. Not, not bad. Not bad. Then we have the blades of primordia. This one just coming out, but not holding its own. But to be fair, I think if most of us took a step back and looked at it, if you really like dual wielding and you really like this whole blade of chaos style stuff, you're going to like it, but it, it is a niche. It's like a high quality niche. So I actually think you guys cooked here. I think this makes perfect sense to me. Next we have the recon butterfly knife or balisong. I think this is really good as well. It doesn't have too many effects. If you just want clean butterfly, the, the, the animations are fantastic. Otherwise it can be a little bit boring. So B tier is good. Then there's the smite knife. Fuck you guys. <laughs> This is obviously trash tier, but the meme lives on, so I will allow it to live on. In B tier it goes. Then we have the Yoru's butter stylish butterfly comb. I would say very niche, but high quality niche, so that works. There's the Radiant Crisis 001 baseball bat. I don't think, I think this is C tier, but if you guys really like it, that means it's speaking to the right niche, right? It means you guys enjoyed this niche, so that's fine. Uh, then we have the Oni Claw. So the Oni Claw, I would say, is very, very, very fairly placed. Um, we're, we're kind of hitting the upper echelon of B now. So here on out, it's like B plus. You know what I'm saying? Because the next one's the Reaver Knife, the original Reaver Knife. I think it's an OG, but didn't hold its own animation wise. But not bad. I, I really oh, it's a bad knife. Then we have the Power Fist. Very expensive knife. I think it's the most expensive knife in the game, if I'm not mistaken. And it's at B. So it's not terrible. I can't say it was a huge mistake, but it's interesting to see that it didn't really climb its ranks up to like S tier. Like the money doesn't equate the quality and love by the community is what I'm trying to say. They're not one-to-one. -one. Then there's the glitch pop dagger. This used to always be S or A tier way back in the day. I think it's fair in B tier compared to what we have now. Then we have Gaia's Fury. I am surprised. I prefer the ax uh, and I'm someone who actually likes dual wielding. I just didn't think this felt like it fit too well. Um, I'm still waiting for them to pull off a dual wield different weapon that people will like but b is also not bad then we have the araxis i would put this in a tier but i understand i understand like why it, it, it can be kind of plain relative to other knives and it's very niche as well but i like it i would put this a but b is not unfair either especially because it's like upper echelon right we have the rui staff same idea goes here it's like araxis but in reverse i don't really like it but if you really just want a staff weapon then it cooks, right? Then, then, then it cooks. Next, we have the Champions 2023 Kunai. 
funny because I, this is this is like the jet animation where it should have been. However, if they just added a little bit more flair, a little bit more flair, this thing would be A or S. Without a doubt, most of you would agree because the overall look of it, black, gold, very clean, nice looking knife, but then just having a dumbed down version of the jet animation wasn't enough to carry it up there. So that much is fair. Now we get a heat up into the A tier. Just making A minus would be the Relic Stone Daggers. Probably the only really good dual wielding knife in the game, in my opinion. I love these knives. To me, they're S tier, but that's a personal preference. I'm surprised they're even this high because they're they are also very niche, but they're very pretty to me. But yeah, they enter the A tier. The Celestial Fan continues to hold strong, coming right after it with even more votes. A tier, perfect. Something that did surprise me and even beat both those knives is the Sovereign Sword. I own this. I liked the Sovereign Sword, but then I just never equipped it because I think it got really plain relative to other things. Like now I could see this as a battle pass tier knife, which is crazy. I think it's still pretty, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if it's really A tier. I think I would have just put it B plus, but that's my opinion. Then the Ruin Dagger, easily A tier just for its value. This is peak battle pass. I'm sorry to be a broken record. One day I do believe, like it's been years. It's been years I'm making content. One day I'd like to believe that there'll be another knife up here where I'm like, yeah, this was an A tier battle pass that wasn't like three, four years ago. <laughs> like, uh, I hope we get back to this point. After that, we have the Overdrive Blade. I think this looked like it was gonna get a lot of hype. Um, then it died down quickly. I actually thought this would be S tier just by the, I, didn't, I don't like it, but based off the community's reception, I thought it was gonna be really up there, but nope, A tier is pretty fair. Black Market Butterfly Knife up here in the A tier. I think it's a good spot. Mage Punk Spark Switch for the win, making its way up, dude. I th it keeps climbing little by little. I like this knife. I like it a lot. I think it's very clean, especially in the gold variant. Mwah. I think it's very pretty. Then we have the Neo Frontier Axe. Okay, maybe I lied. I, I said if you really want an axe, use Gaia's, but if you really just want like a hatchet axe, Neo Frontiers. Neo Frontier is your, is your knife for sure. Ignite fan, very pretty. Just elaborates on the Celestial fan with a little bit more flair and two variants. So I love the Ignite fan. Perfectly placed in A tier. Then we have the Ion Karambit. I think this one's pretty good. I mean, A tier is fair. Uh, I don't love it personally, just cause I don't think any of the variants cook that well, but it's not bad. Now the last spot, the very last spot in A tier is the RGX 11Z Pro Firefly. It is, pretty much perfectly placed here at A+. But as we move into the last 10 skins, since they hit my top 10, so they're the top 10 most voted, they get to all be in S tier. Now, with that in mind, I would like to say that it heats up quite quickly. So the bottom of S tier and the top of S tier have double the amount of vote discrepancy. So the first S tier is the Onimaru Kunsuna. I cannot say it, bro. I, can, I cannot say it. I'm sorry, but it's beautiful. It is a katana, but it has half the amount of votes as number one. Just keep that in mind. It is a beautiful, it's one of my favorites. I think it deserves S tier. It's expensive, but I think it deserves S tier, but still half the amount of votes is number one. After that, we have the Champions 2022 Butterfly Knife. Very fair, very beautiful butterfly knife. Love the way it scales and changes with your kills, top fragging and whatnot. So good job, this is a W. Prime 2.0 Karambit. I think this held up better than it should. To me, it's an A tier, but to you guys, it's made its S tier. Then there's the RGX 11Z Pro Blade. This one was like number one for so long. I think it does deserve S tier, but I don't think it deserves number one. So I'm, I think it's a perfect spot. You, this list overall, I've agreed with you guys more than disagreed, so good job. <laughs> Next, we have the VCT Lock In, dude. Dude, when this first came out and I'm like, this is a really good skin, guys. Like this will, if you want clean, go Xeno. If you want not clean, go this, but still clean. Like I, people hated on me, but now it rivaled. It's it's really up there. Next up, we have the Zero Fang Knife. I am shocked. I am shocked. I do not think this, this is interesting. I think, and it's the animations. The animations is carrying it. Animation wise, it's just a flashier VCT lock-in, so I think it's pretty good spot. It's not my favorite knife, but it's in a pretty good spot. Then we have the Xeno Hunter knife itself. So just for reference, there's only a nine vote difference between VCT lock-in all the way up to Xeno Hunter. So all the Xeno Hunter animations have led themselves into the S tier and close together. Meaning if Riot keeps up a Xeno Hunter animation plus a clean looking effects based skin, they're gonna keep landing up here in the S tier. 
like every Xeno Hunter animation is in the S tier. Just to go show, it goes to show how much they cooked with the original animation. Amazing, amazing. Now we enter the top three of the S class. In third place is the Kuronami no Yaba. Fair. This is fair. This I'm surprised it didn't even get number one. I'm shocked it's not number one. Like actually shocked it's not number one. It is a fantastic skin line. It was far too expensive for my liking, but to say that the art team did not cook would be a disservice to them because they clearly poured a lot of work into it and it shows all the variations are nice and the animations are gorgeous. In second place, the Champions 2021 Karambit. When I first bought this, everyone called it little. Uh, that kind of hurt my manly. Regardless, it clearly cooked and it is number two. It is at the top. Regardless of it being a little Karambit knife, it is cooking. It is cooking. And I think I understand why, because the Karambit animation is fantastic. This one loops, it is gold and black, which is just such a, such a popular and clean looking style. It glows and it's exclusive. So it's just checking a lot of boxes, except one, which is its size. In number one, we have the Reaver Karambit. I am shocked. This is still up here. This has, this was, so for reference, this was number one in the last video, three and a half months ago, when there was less knives. This thing cannot be dethroned. I can't fully understand it. I personally didn't buy it because I thought it didn't look good, but I am obviously in the minority. I will take the L. You guys voted. It has substantially more votes than the rest, so I'll take the L. I'll take the L. You guys voted this number one, and I will respect your guys' taste. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the vast majority of the community down below.